His love for us, how vast beyond all measure that He should give His only Son and make a wretch His treasure. How great the pain of searing loss! The Father turns His face away. As in the grave, how many days can you like? the chosen three. Bring and look at this, John chapter 20. It says, early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away. Behold the man upon his cross. My sin upon his shoulders Ashamed I hear my mocking voice Call out among the scoffers It was my sin that held him there Until it was accomplished His dying Death has brought me life. I know that it is Luke 24, Luke writes, But very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance, so they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. I will not boast in anything. No gifts, no power, no wisdom. But I will boast in Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all, right, all my heart. Let's read 1 Corinthians 15. It says, Let me now remind us of uh, the Apostle Paul talking, okay? Let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before. What is the good news, right? Jesus. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. It is this good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you. Unless, of course, you believe something that was never true in the first place. I passed on to you what was most important and what had also been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins, just as the scripture said. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. He was seen by Peter and then by the twelve. Oh, oh. After that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he was seen by James and later by all the apostles. Last of all, as though I had been born at the wrong time, I also saw him, for I am the least of all the apostles. In fact, I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle after the way I persecuted God's church. But whatever I am now, it is all because God poured out his special favor on me, and not without results. For I have worked harder than any of the other apostles, yet it was not I, but God who was working through me by his grace. So it makes no difference whether I preach or they preach, for we all preach the same message that you have already believed. And what's that message? He came, he died, he rose, he's coming back. Right? That's what they all were preaching. But tell me this, since we preach that Christ rose from the dead, why are some of you saying that there will be no resurrection of the dead? For if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised either. 
And if Christ has not been raised, then all our preaching is useless, and your faith is useless. And we apostles would all be lying about God, for we have said that God raised Christ from the grave. But that can't be true if there is no resurrection of the dead. And if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless, and you are still guilty of your sins. In that case, all who have died believing in Christ are lost. And if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world. So he just goes, oh well. He goes, well, if that's really the truth, and we're not all going to be raised from the dead, and we won't have a resurrection, right? Then, then what are we doing? We've missed everything. So look in here. He says, but in fact, the yeah, the birds are pretty. He says, but in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first of a great harvest of all who have died. Because when was he raised? On first fruits. He is the first fruits harvest. So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man. Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. When will we get new life? Oh, Jesus raptures us? Yes, the rapture of the church. What will well, happen? Well, that took me a minute because I don't know. No, you were right on. Church. Yeah, but yeah, the, the rapture of the church. Day. We will be re we will be raised imperishable, right? Our bodies and our souls will be raised and joined together to be with the Lord and we'll never have to leave him. So what do we do? Think carefully about what is right and stop sinning. Look at that sun coming up. Mom, did you see the sun? And then there it was, it was way closer than we would go. But it was the sun and then we was like an air. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 through 53. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. Okay, this is something pretty exciting to hear, right? We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever. And we who are living will also be transformed. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. What is that moment when that trumpet sounds? What is that? Huh? What is that? That moment when the trumpet sounds? What is that? That's the rapture. Oh, I don't know. We hope and pray every day. Say, Lord, I pray today is that day. It could be tomorrow. And if it's not tonight, we'll say, Lord, I pray tomorrow is that day. Because we are ready every day, huh? Well, yeah. you know something that confuses me? What? Isn't Jesus waiting for everyone like who is? He's waiting for that perfect moment, whenever that moment is. But he does know. Listen, it says in 1 Thessalonians 5, starting in verse 13, it says, And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died, so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. So this is our family and our loved ones who have known Jesus and have died, right? Like Nana, Aunt Myrna. For since we believe that Jesus well, died and was raised to life again, was he raised to life again? Yes, he was on first fruits, right? Mm -hmm. The same day today, just almost 2,000 years ago. Oh. Since we believe that, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord, so we can trust this and believe this, can't we? We who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, 
with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will be raised from their graves. Then, together with them, we who are still alive and remain on earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. Now concerning how and when all this will happen, dear brothers and sisters, we don't really need to write to you. Don't you wish we can say, but, but Apostle Paul, please write it to us. <laughs> Tell us all these things. For Is you know, for, no, for you know quite well that the day of the Lord's return will come unexpectedly like a thief in the night. When people are saying everything is peaceful and secure, then disaster will fall on them as suddenly as a pregnant woman's labor pains begin, and there will be no escape. What if it's someone that follows that says that? But you, who's the you? We're the you, right? You aren't in the dark about these things, dear brothers and sisters, and you won't be surprised when the day of the Lord comes like a thief, for you are all children of the light and of the day. We don't belong to darkness and night, so be on your guard, not asleep like the others. Stay alert and be clear-headed. Night is the time when people sleep and drinkers get drunk. But let us who live in the light be clear-headed, protected by the armor of faith and love, and wearing as our helmet the confidence of our salvation. For God chose to save us through our Lord Jesus Christ, not to pour out his anger on us, Christ died for us so that whether we are dead or alive, when he returns, we can live with him forever. So encourage each other and build each other up, just as you are already doing. How exciting is that? Oh, here comes the sun. My eyes are going to start Well, Mom, I can see like that.